Right, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm going to do another review today, and it's on another Wolfang action camera, and it is the Wolfang Seeker One, which is a really uh, interesting camera. So I just want to give you a few more details on it, and then, as usual, what I'm doing is at the moment I'm I'm going to carry on comparing a decent entry level, cheaper. Um, camera in the lineup compared to uh, a more substantial piece of kit which obviously I'm going to be using the Osmo again for the simple reason um, that I really like other than the fact of course this one is white and this one isn't but weight wise the way that it's designed and everything else and obviously we know that the um, stabilization on the Osmo Action 4 is absolutely brilliant um, I've got a GoPro Hero 12, I'm, I'm not into either one any more than the other in many ways, but they've both got really, really good stabilisation, it's like the market leading, so if I compare an entry level, or should I say a mid-range camera um, to such a, a renowned brand, it just gives you an idea, just not really how good the Osmo is, but how good this is compared to the Osmo. Right, so he, here we have the uh, Wolfang Seeker 1, rather a strange name. Um, the reason it's called that, it's, it is actually a generic um, action camera. It, it is produced by an alternative company as well, um, but mainly the one I've seen in the UK is by Wolfang. Um, and also there's like two kinds of module that these things can sit in there's one that goes on your cycle your push bike uh, it's like an external battery pack with a built-in light and so on just so that you can record yourself when you're out and about um, now it states on the details it is actually a true 4k 60 frames a second action camera and it records at 100 megabytes per second which it's pretty damn good when you look at that. As I say, it's quite a weighty device. Um, on my previous review on the GA440, if you remember on that one, the actual uh, lens, just the outer unscrewed. Now, when you look at this, if I can just get that up to the camera, if you look at the actual lens on it, it looks like it unscrews, but I don't think it does. I don't want to break it but I can't get that to turn to me the way that the lens is inside I, I don't think that that actually unscrews um, unlike the GA440 obviously it's not got everything built in like the other one so obviously battery door pops open micro SD slot there that closes not the easiest to close You've got to, there's a gap there so obviously if this was going in water, because it is advertised as waterproof, that's not. There we go, it's clicked in now. And then on the side, there's a little port. Now that's got a micro HDMI output by the looks of it. And obviously USB-C charging. Again, not the easiest, gotta make sure that's clicked shut. No screw thread on the bottom which obviously is a, a little bit of a, a negative. And the reason is if you want to mount it, you've got to put it in this cage. It sits in there. It's got the old GoPro style prongs on the bottom of it. Bit of a shame that they couldn't fit a screw thread on the bottom of there. But I understand when you look at the distance between obviously the battery door and that, there's not that much room. And if something was fastened in there anyway, you're not going to be able to open that to change the battery. Uh, just two buttons on it on the top, uh, an on button, stroke mode button, and a record button. So we'll get this thing booted up. I really do like the interface on it. It's a bit slow. Again, I keep on about these things, but the interface, a lot of them always remind me of the old SJ cams. This actually reminds me of something else, and I wonder if you can guess what it is, because that bit at the bottom, if I click on there, that there opens up, and you can alter each one of these. Now, if I click on, you can actually then go in and alter the settings for each one. 
Now, that really reminds me of a GoPro. Uh, you've got stabilisation there, slow motion, obviously digital zoom, and on this one here, it has got a front-facing screen. You can't run both screens at the same time. Um, one of my previous viewers pointed out to me, obviously, the, the, the stress on the item, the heat generated and so on, if it's running both. And then ultimately, if you're vlogging, you're only going to be looking at the front. I understand you're only going to really need one screen at a time. So obviously on this one, both screens are running. But if I'm vlogging, I'm only looking at the front one. So it's not really a drawback. Um, one thing, if we click on there. So shooting setting gives you manual and auto control of advanced settings. So you can go in there then and that brings up another manual. So stabilization, professional. So that's manual on there. And then that means I can alter all the settings then on it. So ISO goes up to 6,400 all the way down to 100. And then come out to that one shutter shutter speed i would have thought i could have done an extended shutter speed on it i've not seen so 1 1 20th is the slowest that i can do on that it would have been quite nice to be able to do a uh, long shutter release if you're doing star trails and so on ev compensation and white balance so if we come out to that and we'll go to auto we'll keep it on auto while we're doing the review ev compensation white balance that's about it come out to that and then if obviously at the moment i'm in film so i'm in cinematic 4k 30 frames a second now it says that we can actually this is true 60 frames a second so if we go into there we're in 4k 30 frames a second 4k 16.9 4k 4 by 3 if we click on that one let's go up to 60 frames a second and then we'll set the Osmo action to do exactly the same. Come out of that. If I swipe, time lapse. Now time lapse, if we go into there and we look at the settings, I've got it set to 2.7K at the moment to every 10 seconds, but we'll alter that. So if we click on there, we're going to alter that then to 4K. And we'll alter the 10 seconds down to the slowest it'll do, the quickest should I say it'll do is three seconds, that'll do. It is pretty responsive, it's just me and my big fat fingers. So we've got time lapse, got video, and we've got photo. And in photo at the moment we're on 12 megapixel. And we'll alter that one so format standard we can have raw and we can have super photo so let's go for super photo let's have a look what super photo is like and i can't quite figure how how can i alter that click on there so professional auto it does advertise as 20 megapixel but we'll keep it on that 12 megapixel super photo uh, we can choose what type of photo we take so on the ah, that's a shortcut there for your photo settings timer and as I said digital zoom now in order to get the front screen on on the other cameras you press that quickly and it changes it now on this one you have to do drop down menu this is a bit of a pain so on here sound brightness of the screen lock your orientation and then I can choose click there hey presto it's now on the front but that isn't touch operated so I've got to give this a press and then it goes back to the back not the biggest pain in the world but that's the basics of your setting around the camera and it's also on the app it's got a the app is called go ape a bit of a strange name it's supposed to be super uh, stable the go ape compared to other wolfangs that they've had in the past so 
I'll test that. You saw that the GA440 wasn't the most uh, steady of cameras in the world. Um, let's see what this one is like for, a, I would say, a mid-range camera. But again, kudos to Wolfang. It really is a weighty device. Seems quite strong. Um, allegedly it is waterproof as it is I would say you're probably only going to get about three to five meters on it it doesn't look the most waterproof in the world now the box that it comes in is huge in fact it's so big we would have to zoom out slightly so that you can see the thing so let's zoom out and then this is the box that comes in. So your camera goes in there. You got accessory pouch here. And I really like how they've done this. So you open these up and then you've got really nice laid out. And okay, plastic, but everything's plastic in this day and age. But the finish on these just seems a little bit better than the ones that are in the GA440. You've got a little box there. And then underneath here is a big box. So I'll open that up. There's cable ties in there, which I'm assuming that's just to, if you fasten it to something, your bike or whatever, making sure it's secure. And if we open this one up as well, in here you've got all your other mountings. Um, USB little some kind of lanyard or something can't see a lens cap or something which would have been nice this one is quite interesting you get a separate uh, battery door on there and the battery door has got obviously a pass through so that you can be recording and charge it at the same time which I thought was quite a nice touch um, that back in there not quite sure why I've got a bit of foam in that one. I'm not quite sure. Unless you're supposed to stick it over your mic, but I wouldn't have thought so. And then loads of different brackets and so on. But there is no external waterproof case. So you're only stuck with the built-in waterproof that you've got in the camera. There's also no um, dual charger. So it comes with two batteries. But you're going to have to charge them up in the camera, which again is a shame. And uh, obviously no remote control, which all the others come with a remote control. So there's 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 bits missing out of it. Um, it is at the moment in pricing their most expensive action camera at £158. I got it with some money off, so it worked out at £108. It was a £50 off offer. Again, I've just brought it to review. I will send it back because I do not need that many action cameras. But let's get this thing set up. Let's do it against the Osmo. So this is me now backlit in my living room, as I did the video the other day. As you can see, this is me backlit. And then if I pan round, that's the light from the window. Now, one thing I will give them again, recommendation for, the front screen, which I'm using now on the Wolfang, is a lot clearer than it was on the 440. The timer showing me that I'm recording is really bright, even for me with my poor old eyes. So I've got it set in cinematic at the moment, 4K, 60 frames a second. And obviously I'm recording on the Osmo at the moment. And I've actually just got both of them. I've not tweaked anything on the colour or anything else. Um, but it does seem really, really clear. I'm dead impressed with that. In the corner where it says, even I can see it. Now, the screen's gone off again. So, to say battery, if I just press the record button, it comes back on. I think that you can actually alter the timeout period, obviously, on the camera for that. So, let's go out, because we've got the stabilisation on. Let's nip up the front door. People walking past, I think, what the bloody hell is he doing with this? Right, we've got both of them recording in 4K 30 frames a second. 
and that does seem a bit better. I've set the action four to actually ultra wide, and that seems a closer to what I'm seeing in the Wolfang. Interesting enough, the Wolfang does do HDR video, but I'm just keeping it standard as it is. And we'll see what it's like. Let's go for a quick walk. What's the stabilization like walking? Turn round. Back to the house. Quick jog. What's the stabilization like there? Is that better? Was that better? So, quick test of sound. Obviously, I've been recording this as I'm walking around on the Osmo because it's not only got a far better mic. Let's just test the Wolfang. Wolfang testing sound one, two, one, two. Testing Wolfang sound one, two, one, two. that when the stabilization is on uh, on the wolfang so i had maximum stabilization on just it does stay obviously it stops cro cropping in so this is with the stabilization off compared to the ultra wide view on the osmo action 4 what does that compare like All right so um you've seen uh, the footage of the seeker one um I just want to give you a recap after I've done the footage and I've reviewed everything back what I think so it's a really unusual camera it looks far more expensive than it is it does look like a really good mid-range action cam obviously as I said the uh, lens doesn't remove even though it looks like it should um, I'd say maybe you can force it off they say that the Ace Pro isn't removable, but a lot of people have found out that it is. It's just a tiny little bit of glue holding it on. I suppose if you smashed it, yeah, you're going to look at trying to replace it. It's covered in finger marks. Um, it's really weighty, you know. Um, I don't think that the finish on the, the doors, the compartments, is trustworthy i've not obviously dunked it in water but you you do have to make sure when you close the, the the bottom battery door and the side door where the charging port is that you close it properly um it's disappointing that they don't give you an external battery charger disappointing that they don't give you a waterproof case i think the actual cage for it is quite rubbish to be honest with you it's quite flimsy it does its job 
um, but it, it's quite when you put it in you've got to give it a really good see how like it doesn't you've got to line it up on the front to put it in at an angle and then you've got to give it a really good push to make sure it's in see that I don't know I think maybe they could have done a little bit better on that to be honest with you and then again taking it out isn't the easiest either um, the screens are really really good on it I like the interface the interface definitely reminds me of a GoPro I think that's really nice how you've got your shortcuts to get into the different settings um, the time lapse on it is goes down to three seconds which is sufficient the slow-mo only does 120 at 120 there's 120 frames a second at 2.7k or 180 frames a second at 1080p uh, as i said I do, I do like the the interface because you can just click on that and then obviously it takes you into all your different you can set them up to suit what your filming needs are um, I think the, the, the mic on it is remarkably good. It's far better than the 440, I think the mic is. I think the video quality looks better than the 440. The biggest letdown for me is when you go on the app, if you look at it, it's for sale on Amazon at the moment, and you go on the app and it says this, go ape, and it's like next gen stabilization, um, you've seen on the video and I did another clip after that just to make sure I'd not got the settings wrong or anything like that I think the uh, stabilization is atrocious it jerks suddenly from side to side and the EIS is definitely on because you can take it off and it makes a lot the picture a lot bigger so obviously when it's on it's cropping in and it's using a, a digital uh, effect to keep the video stable so without a gimbal or keeping this stationary I just don't think that the stabilization is is up to much at all and at the end of the day these things are still whether the cheap or expensive is advertised as an action camera uh, action involves movement movement needs stabilization so to be honest with you okay 158 pound you can buy it for 108 with some of the offers if you look with it being off. 108 pound is cheap for camera. I get that. You'd be far better off in my mind saving up the extra 100 odd quid and buying an Osmo or GoPro or a second hand GoPro, an older one. Like even a, a, a GoPro Hero 6 would give you better footage uh, stabilization than this. Uh, an Osmo 1 would give you better stabilization than this. You probably will pick up an Osmo 1 now for probably a similar price to what you buy this for new. So would I recommend it? To be honest with you, no. Such a shame. Um, some things are so much better than the GA440. The stabilization seems a lot worse. I think they could put it together and make a far better system. If they tried, they haven't at the moment. So I'm still on the hunt for the perfect mid-range action camera that's good value that I can review, recommend for you guys to save you the money and the hassle of making a mistake. So I hope you've enjoyed the review. Thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the review, please give me a thumbs up. A subscription would be absolutely amazing. And as always, until next time, stay safe.